In the beginning, a garden was planted, enclosed within the earth, in the east, the Orient, far east, says Enoch before the flood, and Noah who lived there and mapped it in the Philippines. The Bible has always led there, and even Bible historians knew how to read the Hebrew, such as Josephus in 90 AD, Lactantius, an African in 310, and in 550, Cosmos, the Greek monk and merchant traveler who went to the Indies, wrote in Alexandria, Egypt, Africa, Christian topography, and he mapped paradise as the Philippines. That map was even published in the Greek edition of the Bible at one time. A 6,000 year track record, forgotten today by illiterate scholars. They have no education on this topic. Let us explore this massive trove of ancient maps. Israel is not east, and a spring is a spring, not a river and must be fed by a mega river as its source and must connect to three other heads as well, all rivers, and actually salt water even. Can they read? Africa is not east nor in Shem's far east, where the garden has always resided. Mesopotamia is the occult creation myth of the Nephilim, nice scholars. Modern rivers from rain did not even exist before the flood, and the Bible never uses the word Tigris ever in the original Hebrew. Why do modern scholars have no clue when the evidence is so vast? The Garden of Eden revealed, resolving the 6,000 year testimony marking the Far East. Now available in print only no ebook on Amazon and Shopee Philippines over 75 high resolution color historic maps with accurate interpretation no one can truly dispute get your book now and a new series begins In the last video, we demonstrated several maps that locate Marco Polo's famous Isle of Gold in the Philippines, Zapengu. Why did so many map it out that way? I mean, it's crazy, right? <laughs> no, that's the fact. What's crazy is anyone thinking that Japan was ever Zapengu. Oh, after this video, you're going to know that for good. Did they not know where Japan was in the 13th to 18th century, especially the Chinese who were telling the story? Duh, of course they did. Uh, do they not record Japan? <gasps> they do. We'll show you a letter. And the name is not Zapangu. Wow. That's one of the most unacademic, unscholarly, Pieces of propaganda, racist propaganda that we've ever seen. Now that right off the top is a problem, but it gets far worse. Of course they knew as they drew in the Isles of Japan, uh, well, where Japan is up north, uh, where they belong. But Zapangu was in the Philippines. Was it a mistake? Should it be? We covered the Japan Today article in which they admit the West named their country Japan after Zipangu, essentially, and not the other way around. That's backwards uh, reasoning. Uh, yeah, we fell for that too uh, until we've now tested it and now we can prove this, so we're coming out with this. Now, we already proved this, but now let's go to the actual account of Marco Polo. And guess what? It has several markers. Yeah, even geographic. Hello? Can academics read it all? They, see, what they're doing is they're reading other materials by scholars who are really propagandists, and they're not bothering to read the narrative, because they certainly don't know it. You couldn't possibly say it's Japan, because 
Oh, this leads to the Isles in the South China Sea. What? Japan's not in the South China Sea. Boom, done. That one point. You're out. But, oh no, no. We have more than a 50% failure for 15 criteria that we'll cover in this video. This is outlandish uh, for Japan to be propagated when the Philippines is almost 100%. Wow. Now, he gives the distance. He gives the direction, which, oops, is not northeast, but southeast. That's not Japan. He even tells us where they would go next after going to Zupangu. They then go from Zupangu to someplace else, and it even gives the distance, and it's double as far to Japan. Talk about absolute, utter, ridiculous, illiterate nonsense. Let's get this straight now. They had to be in the Philippines because Japan makes no sense. It's too far away from Vietnam. Uh, Polo gave us the distance, so it's kind of hard to miss. He tells us about a tree, uh, oops, that grows in Japangu natively that doesn't and cannot grow in Japan. Wow. That's pretty bad. Oh, no. But then... He speaks of a spice that is very specific to the tropics that grow in Southeast Asia exclusively on most of the earth. Oh, oops. And, of course, that included the Philippines, who has it natively, but it doesn't grow in Japan. That's illiterate. He enumerates the total number of islands, even in the archipelago, which fits the Philippines. But, oops. Japan is double that, almost 190% off. Wow. A palace or uh, basically, you know, house of gold. Uh, nope, not in Japan. We covered that last time. Uh, wait till you find out the supposed option in Japan, though. We're going to cover that a little. Uh, it wasn't built in the time of Marco Polo. Oops. It didn't even exist yet. Not for another century. These guys aren't reading. They're not even thinking. This, is, this entire narrative leads to the Philippines indisputably. And we're going to settle that in this video. Uh, yeah, there are some things that do test for Japan. But it's really not called testing when you try to harp on or, or fixate on seven criteria where Japan passes out of 15, where they are a 50% plus failure? You gotta be kidding. With the Philippines fitting all but, maybe, and I mean maybe, because we don't know, that's why we'll give them the one X. Uh, if we had their written history, which was trashed by the Spanish, we'd probably find that story was there. But what we do find is the story that Japan tells, oops, has the wrong dates, is too late, and cannot fit on multiple levels. I mean, how can scholars and academics have this so far off? It's called propaganda. They're not trying to. They're following other scholars in a paradigm, in a box, and they dare not think outside of that box. Well, we're going to take you outside of that box today, and we're going to find Zupangu, and it is in the Philippines. Now, we'll answer why, and we will explore these two Chinese words, zi, pengu, which lead, well, once again, to the Philippines, as well as another Chinese word for another island in the Philippines with the same meaning, da. Never Japan. That has never been a theory. It's incoherent. It's nonsense. From the Travels of Marco Polo, you can see the cover on screen. Chapter 2, Island of Zapangu. So this is the big chapter where we're going to learn about this land of gold, this island, this island. In fact, it's islands. Let's be clear, because he's going to tell you that. Uh, islands of gold. Hmm. What archipelago could that be? Well, it can't be Taiwan because it's islands. Oops. That doesn't work, right? Plus, it's too close. It's not in the right direction. It's not. It doesn't fit anything, uh, nor does it have the kind of gold that the Philippines does. Um, and uh, it also says Tartar uh, expedition uh, thither, right? Old English here. Uh, so first, he finishes chapter one with 
this. So let me just read this. It's not on screen, but let me read this. Uh, chapter 1. But first, I must mention the many isles. See, they're isles, not one. In the sea, lying to the eastward. Now, Japan is eastward, but so is the Philippines. Ah, which is it? Northeast or southeast? Oh, did you know Marco Polo tells you it's southeast? That's what he says. He gives actual geography and very, very detailed directions. You just can't miss, especially not if you're a scholar, you would think. But we'll get there. Now, uh, that already starts to identify really the Philippines because where he left from was Manji, which is South China or Zin, and the Sea of Zin, the Sea of Zin or Sin or Sina is the South China Sea. Oops. Yeah. Because it's South China Sea. Uh, yeah. That, that is hard to overcome, especially in lieu of all of this. This is a very large island. Now, this is on screen. Both Japan and Philippines fit that, no doubt. They have large islands, very large. 1,500 miles from the continent, okay, continental Asia, from, from actually two specific ports, he's going to tell us. Uh, and both actually fit, but this will narrow down as to what part of the Philippines you'll see. Uh, and uh, again, Japan is in the wrong direction for starters. So, scholars, left right got that do you know which is which because it seems like you don't if you're saying that japan is sapangu it cannot be you don't know your left from your right let's just be clear now the people are fair now that's not white okay the old english version of fair just means beautiful and actually still does uh really uh although it can today mean white or light skinned but no that's not what it means uh, handsome, uh, so the, the women are beautiful, the men are handsome. You can see it's very clear what they're doing there. Uh, and of agreeable manners. Now, both cultures are fair and beautiful, no doubt. Uh, and uh, handsome, you know, uh, for the men. There you go. Uh, no doubt. However, uh, of course, we're partial to the Philippines, uh, as is the Miss Universe and Miss World pageants. <laughs> Uh, just a little science for you, because uh, Filipinos have actually won that uh, more often than, than any other nation. How about that? Uh, but we'll give them both a check, right? Uh, because there's, there's no doubt Japanese are a beautiful people. Okay. Also agreeable manners. Now, again, that too seems a much better description of Filipinos who are very welcoming. Uh, but again, we'll leave it a check for both. Uh, even though Japan was a rather closed culture in the age of Marco Polo. But it's okay. We'll give them a check. We'll let them have this one, okay? They they need to have some, okay? <laughs> now, they are idolaters, right? Now, we are going to cover this in more detail coming because he goes into detail on these idols. So he's going to describe them. We know exactly what religion it is. There is no doubting what it is. And it is not exclusively a Japanese religion, as some unscholarly, unacademics actually claim. Nonsense. And live quite separate, entirely independent of other nations. So they're not in other, any other empire, and both nations were independent of all others at the, that time. No empire had conquered either uh, in those days, and that includes China, because... Kublai Khan tried to conquer actually both areas, and he failed at both, okay? So that's just plain a fact. Uh, so again, check for both, no problem. But don't worry, we're going to get to it. Uh, Japan's got a lot of excess coming. Gold is very abundant. Now, the Philippines far outranks Japan in history, archaeology, and even science on this one. Uh, and there really is no contest as to which is the Isles of Gold of History uh, map for 6,000 years. Oops, never Japan. Got that. Uh, Japan has never been, and actually Zipangu is mapped in the Philippines, not Japan, <laughs> on many maps we covered last video. And no man being allowed to export it, while no merchant goes thence to the mainland, the people accumulate 
a vast amount. Now, whether that story is completely, you know, fact or not, the point is the people accumulate a vast amount. Now, we're going to go through that and we're going to show you pictures. Oh, yeah, we have illustrations from the Spanish. So we know what the Japanese look like and what Filipinos look like. And it's glaring, the difference. But I will give you a wonderful account of a very large palace. Well, what is he talking about? A king's house or even a house, uh, as Japan Today reads this. Fine, either way, doesn't matter. Uh, either way, Japan fails on this one. Uh, and the Philippines passes. Oops. Uh, we'll show you. All covered with that metal, gold, of course, as our churches are with lead. So gold leaf, essentially. Uh, the pavement of the chamber, the halls, windows, and every other part. Uh, is this a fantastic fairy tale? No. These things really existed in the Philippines. They just didn't in Japan. So in Japan, it's a fairy tale because Japan is a fairy tale as Zipengu. It's actually insanity to even think in that direction. Test it for yourself. Uh, have it laid on two inches thick. That's a problem for Japan, whose gold leaf is a fraction of an inch thick. Uh, so that doesn't work either. Uh, so that the riches of this palace are incalculable. Okay. Here are also red pearls. Once again, we have a check for both. Uh, that is not specifically Japan. No, the Philippines also has red pearls. Large and of equal value with the white with many other precious stones. Once again, both nations have tons of precious stones. And there's no doubting that. Uh, you know, they're volcanic areas. So no surprise that there would be precious stones there. Kubla, Kubla Khan, on hearing of this amazing wealth of Zipengu, that's what this chapter is about, desired to conquer the island. Which island? Zipengu. Is that Japan? Nope. Because Kublai Khan sends a letter to Japan addressing them and he does not call them Zipengu. Oops, that's a problem. Now, we're going to show you that letter. Don't worry, we'll get there. And sent two of his barons with a very large fleet containing warriors, uh, but also from the two ports that go to Zipengu and not the ones that go to Japan, which would include one in Korea. Oops. That's where they tried to attack Japan from on the wrong dates. Oops, that doesn't fit either. Again, Japan has that history, but, uh, you know, two attacks, in fact, from the Great Khan, which shouldn't be a surprise to anyone. Uh, the Mongols loved to conquer, and they conquered uh, a mass amount of territory all the way into the Roman Empire and, and all the way over uh, into uh, you know, all of Asia, mostly, most of Asia anyway. However, the dates are off because it is not Zipengu, which this also demonstrates, really. It actually serves the fact that they have the history. is not enough. It has to be accurate, and it's not. It actually proves that it is not Zipengu. <laughs> Whoops. See, Marco Polo received dates from the Great Khan. This invasion attempt of Zipangu occurred in 1269. Did he get it wrong? Uh, no. <laughs> he got it right. Uh, and that fits Zipangu. It doesn't fit the attempts on Japan, which are later. Uh, see, that's a problem. Uh, Japan had two attempts by Kublai Khan. Uh, to attempt conquest, and they are later in 1274 and 1281, according to Japanese history. Now, the Philippines' local history was erased by the Spanish, and this account, it would have been there. It was likely there. In fact, we're pretty confident it was there, because, well, this is the only criteria that the Philippines doesn't have. That's it. The rest of the 15, it does. So it tells you they did have the history at one time. Uh, and yes, they were literate. They could read and write in their own language, uh, all of them, according to Padre Chirino, uh, in the era in which he traveled the Philippines. So pretty endorsing that they were very literate people. Uh, now, he failed in Zipangu, uh, and years later attacked Japan, which actually makes sense because he needed to recoup. And, you know, before attacking Japan, 
Uh, so he, he attacked Japan, Zabangu first in 1269, and then he goes after Japan in 1274 and 1281. However, this is evidence that Japan was not Zabangu. That's what it is. Uh, and it gets an X still. Uh, but this is the one area where the Philippines fails the test. Again, only because the documents are missing, not because it actually literally fails. But don't worry, this is really the only area that Japan almost had an advantage except their history records. It is not Zipengu. Look somewhere else. This is the wrong invasion, both of them. That's what the history says. They're just not reading that. In addition to the wrong dates, uh, we have the wrong ports as two Chinese ports. Oh, the same two mentioned that they would take to go to Zipengu. Uh, well, they did not include Korea. They were in South China. Oops. Uh, that's another problem because this says that one port was in China and one port was in Korea. That's the wrong story. That's the wrong history. It's Japan's history, indeed. It doesn't fit Zipengu at all. Did you know a letter was sent to Japan from the Grand Khan? Uh, indeed, but it's identifying the nation. They're in the writing. And it's not Zipengu. Whoops. The dates are also wrong, the ports are wrong, and the name is wrong. Yes, uh, this all works together to prove, well, it's not Zipengu. Now, on this one, the actual letter survives. Here it is on screen. This is from Wikipedia, but it's the letter. Go look it up. Uh, you can see the letters used for the country addressed uh, in the caption here. Uh, and we highlighted the second half in yellow. Uh, that is the Chinese word, the classic Chinese word for king. Uh, the other two letters in the front there, uh, we highlighted in the, the uh, pinkish color, well, they're not Zipengu. Whoops. Yeah, that's a problem. Uh, they lead to the word uh, Reben, however you pronounce it, or really, as you see the rendering in other Chinese dialects, uh, you know, very close to the actual Japanese name still used by the locals today. Nippon or Nihon. Uh, what is, is not, it's definitely not, is Zipengu. That's a problem. Uh, in other words, Japan as a nation had a name well known and used by Kublai Khan and it wasn't Zipengu. Oops. This is the name that leads to, again, the modern name Nippon and it derives from a meaning taken also out of context in, in some circles. Uh, it is very simply a reference in Chinese to the land east of China. Uh, that's it. That's all it means. Uh, indeed, the sun rises there before it rises in China. Well, we know that. Everybody knows that. That's not really telling us anything, is it? But it was and is never the land of the rising sun in historic ancient context. We're going to get there. We're going to cover that. That's a plot point on a map, which also leads to the Philippines, never Japan, which doesn't have the right calendar for it, for one thing. Uh, a claim never supported, and we're going to get there. If one was to say, from the Chinese perspective, indeed, that that is true, okay? No problem with that, and there's nothing wrong with them saying that they're the land of the rising sun in the perspective of China, because the sun rises there before it rises in China. No problem. But this connotation is far more ancient in root, and that's where we get into a problem where you have especially colonial mindsets that come in, and manipulate. Japan cannot have it. Not in the world perspective, it fails. It is not the land of the rising sun, which originates in First Enoch. Now we'll cover that coming soon in the series. We'll get there. Basically, this is simply the land in the east of China. That's it. And, well, it's not Zipengu. Right there, you got it. Proof, the Grand Khan's own writing he doesn't call it Zipengu. Duh. Understand more letters are sent in 1274, also not calling Japan Zipengu. 
<laughs> I mean, it, how much more do we need? And after they already tried to attack Sapangu in 1269, which was the Philippines, uh, which is somewhere else, you know, can't be Japan anyway, uh, but it is specifically in the South China Sea, you'll see. Uh, the reason they did not attack Japan right away, they sent this letter in 1266, they didn't attack Japan until 1274. Why did it take them so long? Because they were busy in, in trying to invade Zapangu, Philippines first. See, the land of gold, of course, would be first. I mean, wouldn't you? Uh, they would fail there too, and this demonstrates a window of time to recover before they did, in fact, attack Japan. And they did attack Japan. But again, it's off, the data's off, the dates are off, it just doesn't work. So, wrong story of the wrong place, by the wrong name. Gold is far more abundant in the Philippines uh, than Japan and even China. However, this goes deeper, noting the people accumulate a vast amount personally. That's a huge, huge tell there. Uh, because, well, it's something that the individual Japanese people, well, they just have no such history, okay? Uh, it's, it's not them, period. It doesn't fit. However, in 1590, the Spanish illustrated different peoples in the Orient, which is supported, by the way, by, uh, you know, uh, Lavaceres. Uh, it's supported by um, De Morga. It's supported by Pig Fetish Journal. Uh, there's lots of Spanish history that affirms this, but it's also affirmed in archaeology. Oops, yeah, the Surigal treasure was found, and these rare pieces are found in that uh, discovery in uh, just a, n not far from Butua uh, in Surigal. However, there are several illustrations of Filipinos wearing an inordinate amount of gold in this boxer codex. Uh, off the charts amount. Uh, de la Vizaris really defines these peoples into three classes uh, with an upper class uh, that was innumerable. Innumerable. They, you couldn't number them. There, there were at least thousands of them. Uh, and such persons wore 10,000 to 12,000 ducats of gold, uh, which if you transpose to today's calculation, that's about 1.5 million U.S. dollars in gold that they wore on their persons in public, openly, and freely. That's what the history says. Japan doesn't have that. In fact, what other place on earth even has that? No, nobody. Because the Philippines is the land of gold. And it's not a fairy tale because the pieces are found in archaeology. Oops. Uh, so we know they existed in the Philippines. Then, these very rare pieces uh, found in archaeology. Uh, well, not found in Japan, zero, nothing of this sort. They have no such history like this, and they're drawn here as well. Uh, again, this could be maybe an ordinary couple as opposed to someone else, but it doesn't matter. The point is, Japan just has no such history. Zapangu was never Japan. The Philippines is historically number one in gold in all of history. We've covered that many times in our series. Uh, and after a 3,000-year gold rush, it's still number two on all of Earth in untapped gold deposits. According to Forbes magazine, the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, and they're all citing the Fraser Institute from Canada uh, who studies such minerals all over the Earth and, you know, charted that. So it's there for everybody to see. Uh, South Africa's number one, but it has no ancient application of gold. Didn't even discover gold panning until 1000 AD, 2000 years after King Solomon in the wrong direction and in Ham's land, which it would have to be in Shem's to be the ancient Ophir, and it's not. Um, and they didn't have a gold rush until 1884, so yeah, that doesn't work. The Philippine gold rush, you know, it has continued for 3,000 years, really still does. Uh, they're still tapping gold out of this place. Uh, you know, it's just uh, frowned upon by the government, uh, who even has had ministers that really crack down on miners. Uh, and of course the miners don't like that. They, they want to make money and they prefer, in many cases, uh, slavery, which the Philippine government is not allowing in the Philippines. Good for them. So, uh, so the untapped gold deposits in the ground to this day, so science, that's science, actually says the Philippines is number two today, 
course, it's a quarter the size of South Africa, but nevertheless, uh, Japan, <laughs> nowhere near that. Come on. Uh, is this even a discussion? Well, it shouldn't be because it's so easy to test. And what we're finding is we cannot find a single academic who makes the claim that Japan is the Pengu who has actually tested it and who actually seems to be able to read the account, very simply put. As for the large palace, we covered this last video, a king's house. Uh, so I won't spend much time here, but just real quick, the Philippines has historic record of a king with a house or palace of gold. There you go. Japan has nothing, doesn't have it. Now, what is incredibly laughable, and I cannot believe that they even attempt this, but they do uh, in portions of academia anyway. There are actual scholars who assert that Japan's golden pavilion, a Buddhist temple, by the way, which I'm pretty sure the Buddhist would not agree is a king's house or a palace. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, it, basically, they're saying that that is what this is a reference to, except for one major problem. Those so-called academics think, I guess, Marco Polo was a psychic predicting a temple that wasn't even built yet. <laughs> I mean, that's really bad. It didn't even exist in Marco Polo's time. What? Uh, that's not an academic theory, that's for sure. Uh, it has always been illiterate to assert such. According to Smithsonian Magazine, that pavilion was not even built until 1397. That's a hundred years after Marco Polo. He was dead. So how did he write about it? Uh, he didn't. Japan has no options in any credible history and it fails this criteria. The Philippines passes as it has the history of a palace, a king's house made of gold. Done. Marco Polo then provides detail of idol worshippers, right? An idol worship employed in Zipangu. How anyone can look at this with the multiple heads and arms and not know immediately what this is. I mean, come on. We've all seen Shiva and the other gods, you know, with the multiple arms and going in different directions, even the dance of Shiva and, you know, <laughs> Brahma, you know, the four face, all of these things. We, we already know what this is, you know. Uh, the dog is Shiva from Hinduism. This is Hinduism. Absolutely, 100%. This is Hinduism, which already existed in China and the Philippines. Uh, it really doesn't matter whether it did in Japan, though it did. Um, but regardless, uh, the dog is Shiva uh, and has three heads. You can see on screen all those descriptions. They're there, but I'm just going to go through it quick. Uh, exactly as listed. Uh, even one on each shoulder, exactly as Marco Polo records. The sheep is Mangala, the god of, of uh, Hinduism. Uh, who also has six heads. Oh, there you go. Uh, An Agni with two heads. Uh, the same sheep. The hog or boar is Varaha and the avatar of Vishnu with four arms. I mean, this, every all the details are there in Hinduism. This is so clear. Uh, Brahma has four faces, as mentioned. Durga has ten arms, as mentioned. And, uh, oh, I'm going to get this wrong, but Avalokiteshvara blah, 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 uh, has a thousand arms. Oh, just as the Grand Khan explained to Marco Polo, and Polo recorded. Huh. This is no mystery in the slightest. And no, it is not specifically Japanese as Hinduism was introduced in China, at least by the 6th century, and actually Japan even distances itself as ever being Hindu, treating it as a very small, insignificant cult uh, that never really penetrated, which is fine uh, that they would say that. Also, in yet another gold rush to the land of gold, the Hindus arrived in the Philippines uh, by the 10th century, in fact, bringing Hinduism, uh, hundreds of years before Marco Polo. So yes, the Philippines fits this. Japan actually does not fail this category because they did have Hinduism. Uh, whether they pinned down the dates or not, we know that it got there. 
uh, and it's fine. We'll, we'll give them a check, no problem. Uh, some academics, though, rush to poor judgment, claiming this is a religion only akin to China and Japan, and that's just plain stupid. I mean, I, I don't know how anyone can call themselves but again, here's why. Because they never bothered to go and look for the land of gold and see that there is an alternative, and that alternative also has it, and Hinduism is the actual fit here. It's backwards reasoning uh, based on them saying, oh, it's Japan, and oh, Japan is this religion. Wait, no. This is Hinduism, very explicitly, no doubt, uh, and it fits the Philippines as well as Japan. Check for both, no problem. Now we progress to the nail in the coffin for Japan. Not just this criteria, but the next coming, because this is just like, that's it. This one's about geography. Oh yeah, this account actually has geography. Academics and scholars ignore it, but it's there and you can't ignore it. Yes, it is always provided the direction of Kublai Khan's journey to Zipengu, into the South China Sea. Oops, Japan's not there. You must know that the gulf containing this island is called that of Zin or Sin or Sina. Oh, wait a minute. That's a reference to China, but specifically to South China. Ooh, oops. Now, what is its sea? What's called the South China Sea? C, also referred to as Sin or Zin, uh, even on some maps. The South China Sea. Now, we don't have to guess, though, because this is really simple to test. Meaning, in their language, the sea opposite to Manji. Oops. Wait, Manji is what? Manji is South China. And this is specifically the South China Sea. According to skillful and intelligent mariners who have made the voyage, it contains, boom, this is huge, 7,448 isles, mostly inhabited. Now, oops, that's only half of Japan. That's pretty bad. Uh, and yet the Philippines has about that number of islands, even to this day. Uh, are these scholars or academics uh, that hold such ludicrous positions, that fail such simple tests? Well, they're not behaving like it. That's what we know. Uh, they're propagandists. Whether they intend to or not, they're following propaganda. Uh, from the British, ultimately, from colonialism, really, uh, it is time to free ourselves from that tyranny and racism. And remember, this is not the Japanese people. This is not a Japanese claim. This is a British claim. This is a colonial claim. And it is stupid, really. Come on, they can't even conduct a quick search on Google for that matter. Here is one. Uh, this is not Japan, most especially in the South China Sea. Duh. Uh, they don't have to look this up if they even knew basic geography, of course, because Japan just can't even be the option. But check this out. Japan has over 14,000 islands. Oh, uh, that's not 7,000. Uh, would you look at that? The Philippines has, well, just about 7,500 islands, fitting the Grand Khan's enumeration generally. Japan fails, uh, especially since it is never in the South China Sea. Uh, why did so many maps we've covered last video chart Zipangu in the Philippines? Well, here's why. Because those could read. Modern scholars and academics seem to be challenged to do so. Again, following you know, what's come down through tradition, not bothering, and they do this with the Bible too, not bothering to actually read the original document. Uh, I mean, 190% off? Uh, the figure, well, that that's laughable. Uh, this was never a theory. It is really insane to propagate it. Think about it. Even the British Encyclopedia uh, Britannica knows that Manji is South China. Thus, the sea 
there is the South China Sea, not the East China Sea of Japan, uh, in which Cathay uh, would have been used in terminology, not Manji and Zin or Sin or Sina, uh, which is also another reference to South China, Sinai, in fact, even, uh, and the South China Sea. Never Japan. This is too easy. Remember, we read this very large island of Zipangu was 1,500 miles from one of the Chinese ports. They're two listed. Not Korea. No, that's the wrong story. <laughs> Both ports are in China, and they are the same as the invasion of Zipangu uh, because it's in the South China Sea. Even the ports tell you this. I mean, it was an excursion to the South China Sea, period. Uh, in the book, we go into detail about the prevailing winds, in fact, uh, of such a trip as, you know, that data is mentioned here as well. We're not even going to cover that in the video here because uh, it's there in the book. But uh, we prove with history from a Muslim sailor, in fact, that the return trip uh, that would occur uh, in a month when the prevailing winds from the Philippines would propel a ship to the northwest, the uh, the Muslim sailor actually waited for uh, June for that to happen. Uh, it's monsoon season and very specific. Uh, if one were to leave Japan at that time in the ancient world of sailing, in fact, uh, where you didn't have motorboats, right? Uh, their own histories even tell us that's the time of year that they would go to Korea far north for the same reason. Japan just doesn't fit. So let's test this though. Transposing to modern times, Kinsai is very well recorded as modern uh, Hangzhou or the province of Zhejiang. Uh, and Zaitan is known as uh, Kanzhou or uh, the province of Fujian. Uh, they are next to each other in South China, which already tells us much because uh, we're headed into the South China Sea. Uh, we don't have to guess because Marco Polo already told us so. Uh, if one was leaving this port at Zhejiang, uh, it is 1,460 miles to Porto Princesa, Palawan, Philippines. How about that? Now, Japan also fits in distance. That alone is not enough. Of course, we already have the direction. And, well, it kind of matters that they're not southeast. <laughs> Doesn't work. Uh, the circles in academia on this are the blind leading the blind when they claim that somehow that goes to Japan, northeast, when it says southeast. By the way, uh, Batuta is the one who even records the route. It's mentioned here in this reference uh, from the Philippines uh, as Zipangu, really to China that same time of year. He would wait, he would wait until June, the summer, uh, to take the voyage. That's the same as the return trip uh, for the Grand Khan's Navy. However, the story doesn't end there. And this is amazing that scholars don't then take it further and say, well, where did he go next? Does it say how far it was? Wow, it does. And this nails it down where he was. Uh, further geography that proves the next position was not a route from Japan, which is twice as you know distant uh, and far too far away to even be considered, uh, which makes sense. But the Philippines is on the money as Zipangu. This stuff is actually really easy when you break it down and you test it piece by piece. See, the Grand Khan also charted this course to the southeast, very specifically, as we saw. Uh, but he also does again in his next phase of the journey uh, that his navy would take. Uh, for they would leave Kensai uh, and end up around Palawan, Philippines, uh, to the southeast. Again, specified in the directions right there in the account. Kind of hard to miss. That is about 1,500 nautical miles, pretty much, according to ports.com. Now, we have a second route from Zipangu headed to Vietnam, or Champa, uh, Sianba, Sian Champa, it's the same thing, uh, in ancient history, that's Vietnam. Uh, it is another 
1,500 nautical miles by boat. These are all shipping routes. It's all nautical miles, whether I say nautical or not. Get that. Now, what does this tell us? It tells us the Pangu is nowhere near Japan, which is about 3,000 nautical miles from Vietnam. Duh. Uh, that's not 1,500. Hmm. It turns out leaving from Palawan to Hanoi, Vietnam, is 1,379 nautical miles. And that doesn't consider the shoals one would have to avoid. So going around them would make it a little further. Uh, this is the Philippines, never Japan. There you go. Uh, this is truly gross negligence for any academic or scholar to ever even think that Japan could ever fit this. Test it. And as you see, it is a no-brainer. Uh, now, from here, they then continue on to Java. Oh, what part of the world are we in? Oh, yeah, we know. Okay, then Sumatra, then into the Indian Ocean. This is a no-brainer and never should have been a matter of debate. For if they were heading towards the Indian Ocean, why would they go up to Japan and then go back down? doesn't make any sense. Why would they leave from the South China ports when they have ports in Korea and they have ports in North China that they could have taken to easily get to Japan in, in a... Yeah, okay, you know, uh, they're just not thinking. So we know common sense fails them. Uh, so it, it's never going to work in their mindset. And some of them will still pound the pulpit and tell us that Japan is the Pangu because, because, because this scholar said, this scholar said, this scholar said, hey, all three of those scholars and every other one who says Japan is the Pangu is uneducated and illiterate on this topic. That's it. This is an epic failure for Japan and very easy to unravel, and it's unraveled now. But more coming, and it gets even worse. Wow. In all the islands of Sepangu, see, they are uh, islands, right? We saw that in, from the beginning, right off the top, uh, as Marco Polo introduced them as many islands from the start, not just one. Get that. It's an archipelago. It can't be Taiwan, which is also far too close and doesn't fit anything else in the narrative, really, uh, not credibly. Marco Polo recants that these isles have fragrant trees, similar to lignum aloes. Now, uh, on this, many scholars at least do get that right. They're uh, basically, you know, saying uh, this is a direct reference to agar wood. Now, the ancient world valued this wood very highly, so it is very sensible, makes sense completely. Uh, there's only one problem, though, for Japan. Agar wood trees, well, they don't grow there natively. They require warmer climates. This map from the National Library of Medicine shows their distribution, and there you go. It is native and grows, oh, in the Philippines, not Japan, and really in Southeast Asia, uh, the Orient, but not above the Tropic of Cancer, which happens to be where Japan is, right? Yeah. Nope. There's another failure for Japan. And then there is this one. Drop the mic. Oh, this is ridiculous. Uh, I, I don't know how scholars could miss this. Uh, they produce also many and various spice. Now, that could fit both areas. No, no problem there. Uh, no way this could possibly fit Japan, though. Let's read. Including pepper, white, like snow, as well as the black, so white and black pepper. Wait, white pepper, you say? Hmm, where does that come from? Ah, oh. they yield also much gold and other resources as it continues. Now, white pepper really narrows this down as well as being the land of gold. But white pepper is a tropical plant, period. It doesn't grow in Japan, uh, but it is native to the Philippines. Wow. And on this one, we can take this way back. Uh, check this out. Here's a Philippines farm that grows native white pepper uh, today. Uh, no, that doesn't prove it was there back then. Oh, don't worry. We're going to get there. According to Hella.eu, this white pepper was discovered by colonialists in Southeast Asia because that's where it grows. Oh, wait, wait a minute. 
Japan's not in Southeast Asia, is it? Oops. No, it's not. It's Northeast. Uh, and it doesn't grow there natively. Oops. Uh, white pepper is native to warm and humid monsoon forests of Asia. That's not Japan. Uh, it's Southeast Asia, including the Philippines, who certainly has a native white pepper, even mentioned in Pigafetta's journal in 1521. Oops, it's not Japan. They have never been Zipangu. Pigafetta in 1521 describes two kinds of pepper in the Philippines. Hmm, two kinds of pepper? Gee, what could they be? Well, there's the long and the round. Why does this matter? Well, it is the white that grows as the long. And he tells you. The long pepper is like the flower of the hazel tree in winter. A lot of scholars won't bother to go look that up and figure out that that would be white pepper. Hmm, hello. Uh, later winter, of course, into early spring. Uh, here's a picture in the bottom left of the hazel tree. Uh, as winter winds down and spring begins, says the article, uh, that is white, you know, white yellowish color. Uh, it is not black. See, uh, that is the look accurately described by Pigafetta, who was also talking about white pepper, uh, found growing native in 1521 in the Philippines. Nothing to debate here. Japan fails miserably as Zipangu. Academics who have not tested it are not credible on this topic. It doesn't matter what they say if they cannot conduct a simple test. So out of 15 resources here that we've tested that we see in the story of Marco Polo, Here's the challenge. Japan is ludicrous to even suggest as a possible option, it's certainly not a theory, less than 50%. That's an F, folks. Failure. Not a theory whatsoever. It never was. It never will be. Only 7 out of 15. you got to be kidding. That's lousy. The Philippines is almost 100%. The only criteria in which it may fail and we put a question mark there, uh, but we'll call it an X, is because of missing history that very clearly did exist, and the Spanish destroyed it. You can't have all the rest of this, of course, and not realize that that must be the case. It is not known for a people with great personal wealth in gold in that era, not Japan, no, but the Philippines, yes it is. Uh, no such history exists for them, but does in the Philippines. Uh, it has no palace or house of a king in gold, uh, but the Philippines does. And the one they attempt with Japan didn't exist for another century. Duh. Uh, it had an attempted conquest, but the problem is that it's too well recorded uh, as not matching Marco Polo's account. The time is off, the ports are off, the directions are off. Err, fail. Again, Polo tells us Sepangu is in the South China Sea, opposite South China. Duh. It is 7,000 islands as the Philippines, not 14,000 of Japan, about doubly wrong. Japan has no agar wood natively and no white pepper natively. Those are big things. These grow in Southeast Asia, not Northeast. Duh. This trip must be 1,500 nautical miles from one of the two listed Chinese ports in South China, and then another 1,500 nautical miles from there to Vietnam. Japan fails miserably on that because you're getting too far away from Vietnam, which proves that we were heading southeast. This is not hard. Again, doubly wrong. Uh, as it's 3,000 nautical miles away from Vietnam, fail. Can these scholars even read? Well, see, they haven't bothered to. That's why we call them illiterate, because they are on this topic. They're reading the controlled narrative from colonialists, uh, which is really a very racist piece of propaganda. We ought to realize that and get that trash out of our textbooks, uh, rather than just ignore the facts and allow them to do so. 
The facts are clear here in this story. Japan has no history as the land of gold, yet the Philippines is mapped as such for 6,000 years. It is the land of gold for Israel and King Solomon, then for the Greeks, for the Muslims, for the Buddhists, for the Hindus, for the Indians, for Sri Lankans, and most definitely for the Chinese. Zipangu has always been the Philippines, but what about these words? Zipangu. What does that mean? Uh, this is also very telling, and here we go, once again, it leads to the Philippines. Okay, almost done. The words used by Marco Polo matter, though. Pangu is not just another Chinese word, no. Pangu is the name of their creator god in Chinese mythology and Taoism. What is amazing here is Pangu is literally physically ge geography. Because after he created, he actually became geographic features such as the land of creation where he created. The mountains, the rivers, all of it. Now, that god of the religion is not the creator. Yahuwah is. We are Taoists and we're not apologists for that religion. That doesn't matter. What matters is where this leads in connotation to the Chinese in their mindset. That's what matters. Z is self, oneself, from, since, naturally, surely, and the second definition even better, or son, child, seed, egg, small thing, and get this, first earthly branch. Wow. Okay, so wait. You mean when you put these together, you actually have the first earthly branch of creation? as land is concerned, as geography is concerned? Wow! Well, where could that be? Can it be an identifier? Oh, it can and it does. Uh, here's what we know in this account of this incredibly well-documented land. It tops the Garden of Eden. Uh, the Philippines does, Ophir, uh, the Garden of Eden, uh, Sheba, Tarshish, it's, it has different names, and in Chinese it's Zipengu. It has another Chinese name too, with the same meaning, we'll get there. Uh, but it's enclosed within the earth, uh, and the earth above it is the land of gold, since Genesis 2, not new. Uh, it is the land of creation, renamed Havila after Hava, Eve, for her curse in childbirth. That's what Genesis 2 is actually saying, and we know that because of the book of Jubilees. Yahuwah, after he created, did in fact go into the earth, similar to this legend, only he's not the god of Taoism. He went into his holy of holies there in the Garden of Eden, where he would bring man. And again, that is a plot point on a map. Paradise's map for 6,000 years in the Philippines. It is. Uh, Jubilees 8.19 and really Genesis 3 affirm Yahuwah's Holy of Holies exists in the Garden of Eden. That's really not a question. Uh, it's a shame that modern church doesn't know this. Uh, we don't need a temple in Jerusalem, which we will never have his presence in any sense. And understand the temple was a response to Israelites saying to Moses, No, we don't want to, we can't stand the presence, the physical presence of Yahuwah. Please, please, you know, uh, remedy this. And, and, of course, Yahuwah came up with the Ark of the Covenant for that reason. And it was housed in the Holy of Holies. So they kept his presence there. Uh, however, he has a Holy of Holies, a permanent one, within the earth since creation. And it's under the Philippines. Again, according to the book of Jubilees, and really Genesis has always said this as well, we understand that now when we read it in Jubilees in very plain English, uh, we then know that Jubilees 3.32 and 4.29, which mention the land of creation, uh, both affirm that Adam and Eve were exiled from the garden, returning to the very land of their creation, the very soil that Adam would till in Genesis 3.23 is that soil from whence he was taken or created. The land of creation, and in Chinese, that's Zipengu. Uh, so you got three biblical references here from ancient times 
that well identify this is the case. In fact, watch our Miraculous Mindoro video, which I'm going to just bring up here, not going to cover, uh, but yet another Chinese designation with the same identifier uh, labeling Mindoro, which is right next to Palawan, which we saw before, uh, as the land of creation. Ma'i in Chinese. Now we'll cover that uh, just a little right now and that's it. Uh, but go watch the video if you really want to understand how we arrive at such a conclusion. However, Ma'i, the Chinese name for Mindoro Philippines, and we prove that too, uh, is that of pulse, arteries, veins, lifeline, all leading, as geography is concerned, to the land of creation. Same as the definition of Zipangu. Uh, by the way, the word Mindoro is Hebrew, and it also leads to the origin of species, uh, which is amazing. Anyway, and that's the land of creation. This is no coincidence, and it all ties together. When you connect history that many academics have tried to disconnect, misunderstanding most of it, uh, especially in this narrative. So there you have it. Japan fails as Zipangu. Only seven of 15 criteria and proves to be a desperate attempt at propaganda. Uh, basically a simple test reveals. Uh, that's a 50% failure plus, really. Uh, the Philippines checks off 14 of the 15 criteria because it is Zipangu, period. It has always been the land of gold, period. Uh, and only reason uh, that, that we have one that was a failure and not 100% is because, while well, the Spanish erased that history so we can't find it, but it is not needed. Uh, it doesn't, uh, you know, for a report card, which this is Japan, F, right? And Philippines, A. 93%. So you tell me, uh, especially academics, right? You're teaching our children, and if you give them an F, what does that mean? Well, then why would you propagate Japan, which is an F? Instead, why don't you propagate the actual land of gold, which is an A? 93%. The Philippines. There has never been a coherent debate on this topic because it is conducted by those, well, who cannot read the narrative. They just don't bother. They just read what scholars say about it, uh, what academics say about it, and they don't read the original and understand it and break it down the way we have, which is really not hard to do. Uh, they'll quote this scholar or that, but they'll simply forget the account. This is easy. Uh, even the words Zipangu, uh, just as Ma'i in Chinese, lead to the land of creation, both in the Philippines, uh, which is the same land, Havila Ophir, Philippines. The land of gold above the Garden of Eden. Why do you think Solomon wanted its gold for the temple to line the walls with the same gold as that that lines the Holy of Holies? The original one in the Garden of Eden under the Philippines. This wasn't about showing off wealth. Wow. We have over 550 videos on YouTube and other platforms noted in the description box. A little over three years ago, we began publishing these positions in books, and we now have 11 in that time. We have another coming very soon. Uh, be sure to get your copy of Garden of Eden Revealed, the Book of Maps. We have a whole chapter on this topic, in fact. Uh, go to OphirInstitute.com for links. And next, we are printing in the Philippines right now, already out in ebook for free, uh, but we're working with an international distributor uh, since Amazon won't take, uh, at least not in self-publishing, they won't take Tagalog books because uh, they can't support the language. It's okay, uh, but we have someone who will, so it's, it's going to be on newsstands uh, as well, and we'll announce that very soon uh, internationally. So it'll, it'll be pretty much the same. Uh, the Tagalog version of Solomon's Treasure. Wow. This keeps getting better and better all the time. Thank you for watching, and always remember, prove all things for yourself. Yah bless to everyone.